and welcome back to Let's Play Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Now, last time, these candles lit. The game tries to trick you into thinking the sun is in the middle, but... I think most people are much smarter than that. Oh, I'm skipping over this text. My bad. Uh... The messaging tube is foreshadowing. Thy presence is long missed, my liege. The universe is a yawning chasm filled with emptiness and the puerile meanderings of sentience. Why should you deserve special consideration within it, Augustus, above all else? I am your servant, my lord. As always, that and nothing more. Yes, that and nothing more. What revelations do you bring me? My meditations reveal a flaw in our plan. Our plan, Augustus? Mantarok is a shadow ebbing in the light of our glory. It and the others are slow, weak, bound by the realm of the universe. Unable to unite to fight a common foe, they will fall one by one. Unfortunately, this is beyond your understanding. The binding of Mantarok will seal their fate as its power over us is diminished. Such an irony that the Keeper itself be imprisoned within the walls of its own magic. But what of its essence? Is that not the core of its remaining power? Upon my seeping into the corporeal world, I will be the dominant over all, Mantarok included. Your worries are unfounded. You must turn your attention to Charlemagne the Frank. His continued presence within the world is far more serious to our cause. As you wish, Master. He will be dead before the week is out. The little thing I'd like to note about uh, Uliath particularly is that he seems to be the more straightforward of the other two ancients. In uh, the other playthroughs of this game, when you see these conversations between uh, Pius and the Lord that he serves, they uh, the other two, Chaturga and Zelatoth, seem to do nothing but talk around in riddles. Just a little thing that I'd like to note. From my research... It is apparent that the endeavors of mankind are mere puppetry at the hands of the ancients. Whenever a king vows reform, the ancients move quickly to stifle it. Under the auspices of Emperor Charlemagne the Frank, the new Holy Roman Empire was at the height of its power. Hanc mit ad dominum, et imperatorum nostrum, Caralum magnum francum. Deliver this to our lord and emperor, Charlemagne the Frank. No one but him must see it. They are words for his eyes only, at once. Come of him. I have to warn him of this treachery. Amiens, France will be our next location. I'm not exactly sure what Charlemagne the Frank can do against the eternal darkness. I'm not sure if it's a conspiracy theory thing that uh, video game developers <clears throat> like Ubisoft uh, play with a lot. Or maybe it's just something that uh, 
so some bullshit that Silicon Knights just uh, made up. So we're in a very interesting room. This will become a regular room that we will be visiting. Uh, Pius Augustus destroyed his own statue in the last chap in uh, in his chapter, if you remember. It's a statue of Elia. Uh, that statue uh, is actually there before she even lived, strangely enough. And then you got this floor of all these screaming people. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I I, I didn't mean to step on your face. Oh God, I'm, I feel so bad. Today was a really bad day to wear cleats. Alright, so let's explore what we got up here now that we have our unholy book of hell. We have a blue urn. Okay, I don't think it gets anything more. We haven't examined the scroll yet. I want to say it was a magical attack spell, judging by the runes that I saw. I didn't see all of the runes, but I at least saw Anterbach. This is stuff that I'm going to get into later on in the game. Uh, let's, let's use it. We have the, oh. Um, uh, good going. Oh, but we also get a rune. This is actually probably the most helpful rune to get uh, at the beginning of the game. So it's like, uh, let's see. So that one, that one was the red rune, which uh, aligns with uh, the ancient known as Chaturga, which is uh, one of the uh, one of the gods that uh, Uyath is fighting with. He actually represents health, so getting his rune right away at the beginning is a really great thing indeed. trying to get this circle of power, but uh, these monks won't let me get at it. Okay, there's no no point in uh, getting up to this, <sighs> getting down to business up in this room. We should probably warn Charlemagne the Frank now. Oh. Hmm. Well then, I'm going to quit stalling. I'm going to open up this fucking casket. Devil's work. We should get out of here. You have proven what we have feared the most. This poor man has been the victim of great evil. Look how his body has been defiled. As if something has burst out from inside him. Here, take this for your protection. And find the bishop. He must be informed of this horrible discovery. All right, we have a sword now. Good stuff. It's designed specifically for offensive fighting rather than self-defense. Uh, yeah, something came out from inside of that guy. Now, uh, I'm going to get into a little uh, random nitpick here after watching this. All right, so that's going to be what the scroll did to Anthony. He's going to slowly turn into a monster throughout this entire chapter. And unfortunately, that also affects his running speed later on. All right, so all of, uh, all of this spell learning stuff is kind of cryptic right away because there's not really, you know... Uh, there's not really much of a sense 
in learning all of it when you can't really do anything at the moment. You actually, you not, not really, as in like you literally can't do anything at the moment. So, yeah, some monsters will have runes inside of them. You are required to collect every single rune in the game. They're the, the game sets up barriers that prevent you from progressing unless you acquire the runes because they are man they are all mandatory for beating the game. I'm gonna finish off these mummies so that they don't get back up. But and yeah, you have to you have to finish off the mummy to get the rune too. Other zombies, uh, as soon as you beat them, even without finishing off finishing them off, you will get your rune. So yeah. Oh no, we must save the guy so that we can get our reward for it. Actually, let's pick up this torch because uh, uh, these zombies are weak to fire. If I know uh, Resident Evil, zombies usually don't favor being burned to death. Alright. So we get the two-edged sword out of thanks, which we wouldn't have acquired if uh, we didn't save him, I guess. Could have looted it off of his body, regardless. But yeah, we're gonna... We have to find uh, these pieces of the urns. Uh, hmm. Alright, and that's something... Assembled two-thirds of a broken urn. Okay, ho hold on. What? That, that, that sentence doesn't make sense. Re read that back. Oh, we've assembled a broken urn. I've assembled a broken trampoline for my kids. They're gonna die. Alright. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you don't have the torch equipped, you can't actually pick up the pieces. Yeah, back to my uh, little thing about the nitpick. Is that this game, more often than not, uh, will prompt you whether to say yes or no to do a thing, but you will end up always picking yes. Oh yeah, and that's a that's a codex. It allows you to decipher the rune. This game actually has a very unique spell system in this game, and uh, the runes are actually pretty unique as well. It's going to take me forever to get this nitpick out, so I'm just I'm just going to do it right now while these zombies fight each other. This is the codex for the Chaturga rune. Oh, go away. So. Um. Oh, my money is on the Mantrox zombie. Oh wait, where where is? Oh, that was him. Okay, he still drained my sanity even though I burned him to death. That's that's great. So I got a filled red urn. So it's filled. So. But yeah, in the game you will never. You will never actually pick no to anything. Actually, no. I, I take it back. Saying no is justified because usually when you say yes, you progress the game, and sometimes you don't want to progress the game right away. I forgot to examine the tapestry. It usually just says there's a tapestry in the way, and instead of being logical, like pulling the tapestry out, or, um, uh, actually I'm going to keep this torch equipped, or, you know, probably going through it, uh, I don't know, we just decide to burn it. Yeah. This torch is actually really, really helpful. If I were to use a sword in this room, it would have just constantly hit the walls. Alright, so... Step on this plate, it opens the door, somehow, even though the, the bishop got through without needing to. Oh, and Anthony's Anthony's not fast enough to catch up to it. So, here's the codex for the Anterbach rune, and on this table is going to be a spell. The Enchant Item Spell Scroll. And hooray! We have just learned our first spell. So, you can cast the spells from the Tome of Eternal Darkness. You can also assign them uh, to buttons. And then, of course, you can check the scroll to see 
uh, what exactly it needs, and it'll tell you what runes you need to do when you go and make a spell. So we're going to actually assign it uh, to up. And then of course we have the magic meter. So of course, uh, uh, you have to be standing still in order to cast a spell first off. You also have to wait for, the, for a cooldown time every time uh, a spell is cast, and the item is repaired now. Uh, now we're going to do it for the blue urn. Uh, the only way to recover magic is with motion. There's actually, actually, there's a spell later in the game that allows you to recover magic gradually, but um, it's not exactly necessary. You can also enchant items that are already repaired to enchant them and make them deal more damage. And depending on uh, the alignment at which the enchantment is used on an enemy, if it's uh, a superior alignment, then it'll do double damage. Now, the reason I'm going back is because although we we uh, use the urns, they're not heavy enough to press down the plate. So we're going to fill the urns with water to do that. And enchanted items actually have a glow, so they, they light up dark areas for you. A little bit of a fact. There really isn't a reason why you shouldn't have... Uh, an item enchanted at all times. At least, at least the weapon, uh, the weapon that you have have out. Yeah, the spell system in this game is actually pretty interesting. I've actually played this game so much where I kind of know uh, the names of all the runes and can kind of decipher them without the codices. The codices are not uh, required to beat the game. Neither are the scrolls. So, you have come to return my book. Very well then. For your efforts, I promise a quick and merciful death. Oh no. And the bishop will constantly drain your sanity. The, uh, I, guess, I guess you would consider him like our, the first real boss. Or rather, a mini-boss, I suppose. We don't really get into bosses until much later. It takes a lot of hits, even when enchanted. Alright, we're not, we're not even going to give him the pleasure of us finishing him off. This shit looks like it's ripped straight out of a Newgrounds Flash game. Oh, satanic symbols! Satanic Simon! Uh, uh, Anthony is looking at something, so that means there is an enemy in this hallway. But yeah, the spell system, it's kind of like, it's kind of like learning a foreign language, except that it's, you know, a game mechanic, so it's much more, much more straightforward than a foreign language, to the point where you shouldn't even consider it a foreign language. And this enemy is interesting. This is a trapper. And if you let them, they will warp you here. And they're immune to all sorts of melee attacks. Magic cannot be cast in the Trapper Dimension. They die really easily, die with one hit. Sometimes it can be beneficial if you're in an area, like if, if I really wanted to recover sanity here, it actually would have been really nice uh, just to warp to the green area, recover my sanity and come back, but I kind of don't want to recover sanity. I don't really care for sanity. I'll be insane forever. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 
trappers cannot see, but they can sense sound very well. So if you can sneak past them, then uh, they won't uh, they won't be of any trouble. Now, if you hold the X button or press the control stick very lightly, you can sneak past enemies. So that trapper did not hear a damn word. And I'm walking on the ceiling. Great. Oh, well, I guess I guess uh, I guess this is the life that I belong to now. Just stuck on the ceiling forever. No way to get down. I mean, I, I suppose Anthony could learn to free run. He looks like the kind of guy who would free run. This isn't really happening. Honestly, that is one of the most annoying sanity effects in the game. I'm not gonna lie. Haha! -ha. You thought you had me there for a second, didn't you? And now we're at the point where uh, sanity is going to start draining health. But that's that's completely okay. That's completely fine because we uh, 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 stop. <laughs> I said that was completely fine. Then went to get sanity back. So, uh, yeah, walking on the ceiling is honestly one of the most annoying sanity effects in the game because uh, it does last the longest, and there's no real surefire way of getting down. And I could have sworn that that monk has different dialogue because uh, Anthony has now showed up with uh, with a face that not even a mother could love. I, I stand corrected. That is a face not even a mother could love. And now, uh, now we're in limp, limp mode. It doesn't matter how much health you have, you will be limping like this at this point because uh, he is almost a full-blown zombie at this point. And now, uh, another new enemy. The Horror. No, that's really its name. The Horror. Yeah. So, the only surefire way of uh, getting rid of the Horrors is to uh, decapitate all of their heads. Uh, they constantly generate uh, an electric charge. And even if you get away, like, sometimes the, electric, the electricity can kind of screw you over. Uh, I guess now that magic is introduced, I can uh, straight up tell you now that enemies that are blue will drain magic if... Okay. Uh, stop hitting the fucking desk. Oh, the, this is not going well. I I was not even paying attention to my health. Oh, shit. Shit! Now, if this were any other chapter, that would have been straight up death. I actually kind of wanted to show that off on purpose, if, if you didn't, couldn't tell by uh, the obvious bad gameplay there. But yeah, horrors are very tough enemies. But yeah, this is the easiest chapter in the game because you literally cannot die in it. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Uh. All right, well, it looks like we can finally put an end to this madness. Let's get the hell out of here. trying to save him, Anthony. His fate was decided many centuries ago, as is the fate of this world. Despite your faith, there is little to save you from the power of Ulyan. 